All right, so this is 10.1, Interference in Thin Films. This is the start of our new chapter, Chapter 10, which is all about the applications of the wave nature of light. So we're going to be taking a lot of what we learned in Chapter 9 and extending it and sort of seeing how much we can do with it. This lesson is about thin films, which are things like oil slicks or bubbles, and you might um, recognize in the picture on the left here, we have an oil, uh, a bit of an oil spill on pavement, and you've probably seen this before, where you look at the oil and you can see it's very colorful. It almost looks like a rainbow. And same with when you're looking at bubbles. If somebody's blowing bubbles, sometimes you can see all sorts of rainbow colors going on in there. And in this lesson, we're going to learn why that happens and all of the math and science behind that, which is pretty cool. So, um... A thin film is just a very thin layer of a substance. That's a thin film. So we have this thin layer of oil, thin layer of soap. That's the sort of thing that we're dealing with. And you can see the first picture I said is a picture of sort of an oil slick. The next two pictures are showing the sort of things that we're dealing with in this lesson. So you can see that we have uh, light coming in, this ray one here. We have light coming in. And that should be familiar with you. You've got this light, and we're going to have some refraction. So first it enters the soap film here. You see that we're going from air, which has an N of 1.00, goes into the soap film with an N of 1.35. You can see that some of the light goes in, and some of it is reflected. And that always happens. When you have a media boundary, some of the light is going to be reflected. And you can see our light continues, and then at the second boundary, when it reaches the glass, again, some is reflected, and some goes through. And what we're dealing with here is how this light interacts, these two different sets of reflections. You can see that ray 2 and ray 3 are going off very close together, and they're going to interact in a sort of a funny way. Depending on how thick that soap film is, they're going to create all sorts of different interference patterns. So that's what we're looking at. And there's also one other aspect that you need to worry about in, this, in these problems, which is that sometimes, at these phase boundaries, sometimes when we have these reflections, sometimes the light will become inverted which means that uh, the light will be sort of flipped upside down, or it means that basically it'll have a phase change of half its wavelength, lambda over 2. Okay, and so we're going to talk just below about when that happens, but it's going to affect these interference patterns as well. So let's get right into it here. First bit here, it says reflection at a media boundary. So at a media boundary, media boundary is when you reach the barrier between two substances, two media. So at a media boundary, some light goes through, goes through, and that light, we, we say that that is transmitted, and some is reflected. So that happens at every media boundary. Now sometimes we have a phase change at that reflection. Depending on the n, or the index of refraction, of the two media, the reflected light may be inverted. means it gets flipped upside down, which is equivalent to, we can say or, has a phase change of lambda over 2. That's a lambda. Lambda over 2. Okay. So sometimes that happens. 
and we've got the conditions down here. So if we're going from n1 into n2, and if n1 is less than n2, we're going from a faster medium into a slower medium. If n1 is lower, smaller, then that means it's the light moves faster through it. So we're going from a faster medium to a slower. In this case, the reflection is inverted. And this right here, these two points, these are important. Because on the problems that you're going to be facing, you need to actually look at the situation and decide when the light is being inverted and when it isn't. This is part of the steps of solving these problems. So you need to know when the reflection is going to be inverted, which means that it will have a phase change of half the, half the wavelength, and when it won't. So if it's going from a faster medium to a slower, or a small n1 to a larger, to a larger n1, or a small n to a larger n, then it will be inverted. In the other scenario here, we have a slower medium to a faster medium. In this case, the reflection is not inverted. Those are our two scenarios. And the importance here, this affects our constructive or destructive interference. And we're going to be cal um, calculating those below. So this is very important that you know how to do those. Okay, now I do apologize right now for the amount of writing on this first page, but it is, I think, a, um, important that you understand these concepts. Not only are they important concepts, but we're going to be doing calculations where you need to understand the concepts to do them. So, interference. In, thi in these thin film situations, we have some light, oops, some light reflects off the top of the film. The top of the film. And some reflects off the bottom. of the film. I'll just scroll up for a second to show you again this picture here. If we have our soap film here, you can see that some of the light reflects off the top, some of it reflects off the bottom. That's what we're saying. These reflections interfere with each other. And of course, the top film, or the top reflection versus the bottom one, they will have traveled a slightly different distance. So this path difference here, the bottom, bottom uh, reflection travels 2t further. And I'll scroll up again to show you what I mean by 2t. Here you can see t is the thickness, t is the thickness of the film. So you can see that the reflections going off the bottom of the film have traveled 2t more than the top reflection. You might be saying to me, well, it's actually traveling on an angle, so isn't it a bit more than 2t? And for these problems, we're actually always, always, always um, dealing with situations where theta is zero. And really what's happening is they're bouncing down and straight back up. 
the pictures are drawn on an angle just so it's easier to see what's going on. But for our problems here, we're always actually dealing where, where theta equals zero. Theta equals zero degrees. And so we don't need to worry about the path actually be, being longer than 2t. Okay, so always our bottom reflection is traveling 2t, or twice the thickness, more than the top reflection. And so now we can start actually thinking we have the same light, one of them is traveling 2t longer, so if we want to get constructive or destructive interference, well, we want the wavelengths to line up. So we could say that that 2t distance needs to be some multiple of the wavelength for us to get constructive interference. And to get destructive interference, it needs to be half a wavelength longer than some multiple of the wavelength, so that we get an opposite situation. Now again, that's only true if they're in the same phase. If they both have, have the same reflection thing, where I said that sometimes they get flipped, they get shifted by a phase of lambda over 2. So we have two different situations here. One is where they have the same phase, and the other one is where we have the opposite phase. So I'll put one here and two here. So same phase, that's where both reflections have been inverted. So I'll say that here. When both reflections are inverted, we have these two equations. For constructive interference, if we want to find constructive interference, 2t, that's this extra distance here, has to be equal to n times lambda over the n of the film. Okay? And that is going to mean that, um, that the bottom reflection has traveled a multiple of the wavelength more than the top reflection. All right, and so that works for values of n, n equals 1, 2, 3, like this. Okay, so we have any multiple of the wavelength. And for destructive interference, well, we have the same distance that was traveled, the same extra distance traveled by the bottom reflection, 2t. That needs to equal now m plus 1 half times lambda over n film. And in this case, of course, m equals 0, 1, 2, 3, like this. And you can see here that we have 0 included, and the other one we didn't have 0. Because it doesn't make sense for 2t to be 0, for n to be 0 there. Um, but m could be 0 because we have m plus 1 half. So we're, if, we, if that whole dis distance is half of a wavelength, that's fine. Okay. If you do not understand what's going on in this, please, please, please ask me in class. Okay, next one here, opposite phase. So same phase, we had those two equations. For opposite phase, we can say this. When only one reflection is inverted, the Equation switch. For constructive and destructive. So it's the exact two, exact same two equations, these two equations here. You just switch them for constructive and destructive if only one of them has been inverted, only one of the reflections. All right, so that's been a lot of writing. Um, sorry, I was trying to fix that R. I'll just leave it how it was. Okay, that's been a lot of writing. Let's try a few problems now dealing with this. First one says, consider a soap film that is the thinnest film that will produce a bright blue light when illuminated with white light. The index of refraction of the soap film is 1.35, and the blue light is monochromatic with wavelength 411 nanometers. Part A says, calculate the thickness of the film if the soap covers a piece of crown glass with index of refraction 1.52. Okay, always a good idea with these problems to start with a drawing.
So we've got our glass on the bottom, we've got our thin film on the top, and we've got our light coming in, and some of it is reflected, some of it goes in, and then some of it is reflected again, and some of it keeps going like this. And we're not worried about the bottom reflection, we're just interested in our film here. So our film, we said, has an uh, index of refraction, refraction n1 equals 1.35. And the glass here has n2 equals 1.52. Finally, we have the wavelength lambda equals 411 times 10 to the negative, negative 9 meters. That's nanometers. Okay. There's all the information we're working with, and we want to find the thickness of the film. Well, we have our equation here. We want to get, let's see, it says it's producing a bright blue light. That means we're getting constructive interference for that wavelength, right? Our 411 times 10 to the negative 9 has constructive interference. The last thing we need to figure out is where are we getting phase switches. Where is the phase changing? Remember, wh where is it flipping? So that's any time that we go from a lower n, so up here we can say n is equal to 1 because that's our air. So we're going from a lower n to a higher n. The reflection is going to be inverted. So I'm just going to circle where we get our, our inversions here. We get an in inversion here because we're going from 1 to 1 1.35. So that means that this reflection coming out is going to be inverted. And let's see, going from 1.35 to 1.52, well, we get an inversion here. So both our reflections are inverted. So I'll even say that here. We can say both reflections are inverted. That means they have the same phase. We don't need to worry about our extra phase correction. So we can use for constructive interference, 2t equals n lambda over n film. And notice we have two different n's. It could be a bit confusing there. Okay. So that equation, I'll just show on the previous page here, that was coming from here. This is our constructive interference when they have the same phase. Okay. Back to this problem here, 2t equals lambda n, uh, n lambda over n film. Okay, I can fill in some numbers here. Our n, let's just pick a value of 1. We'll just say we want the thinnest possible film. So that means that n is going to be 1 in this case. We, we could have different values of n, but it wouldn't be as thin in that case. So 2t is equal to 1 times our lambda 4, 1, 1 times 10 to the negative 9, all divided by our n for the film, which is 1.35. So that means that um, 2t is equal to 2t is equal to this is equal to 3.04 times 10 to the negative 7 which means that t is equal to that divided by 2, which gives us 1.52 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. That's the thickness of our film. Okay. Part B says, suppose the reflections occur instead from a soap film on water with an index of refraction of 1.33. Now we want to determine the thickness of the film that will produce the same blue color of reflected, reflected light. So now we have, again, our film and we have water underneath. So here we have N2 equals 1.33. So now we have a different situation because this guy is still inverted, but this guy is not inverted. So now we want to use the other equation for constructive. So only the, uh, so we have different phase for the two. different phase, which means that our equation is 2t is equal to m plus 1 half 
lambda over n film, which means that, uh, bring this over here, t equals m plus one half lambda over two n film, which is, I can fill in, we'll choose zero, because we can choose zero for our um, m, zero plus one half, then we have lambda is, um, our value of lambda here was 411 times 10 to the negative 9 over 2 times 1.35. This gives us a t value of 7.61 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. That's our thickness. Good. Okay. So there's one more there. It says, in solar cells, incoming light passes through an anti-reflective coating to increase the efficiency of the cell. The coating has N1 is 1.45, and the material below has N2 3.50. Determine the thickness of the anti-reflective coating that will minimize ref the reflection of light with a wavelength of that. Okay. So again, we have our film, our substance. So this is 1.45. This is 3.50. That means that this is inverted and this guy is inverted. They're the same phase. So we want our constructive interference. Sorry, we want destructive interference now. We want to minimize the amount of um, reflection there. So we get destructive interference. That means that, so same phase, but we want destructive. That means 2t equals m plus 1 half. Ooh. 1 half times lambda over n film. t is equal to, I'm just going to fill in our numbers right now. We've got 0 plus 1 half. Um, our lambda is 7.00 times 10 to the negative 7, and we divide that by the n for the film, so 2 times 1.45. And this all gives us a value of 1.21 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. That's our thickness for that film. So that's how these problems work. I hope you enjoy the problems.